certainly glad to have those that are here with us this morning. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I ask you to turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. And if you're able to, I ask you to stand with me for just a few minutes while we honor God's Word. In 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 15, the Bible said, And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit, and I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thy handmaid for the daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. And Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. My Father, Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. God, Lord, you know each life that's here today. Lord, you know what we've been through, what we're going through, and where we stand even right now. Father, I pray, Lord, that you search the hearts, and God, you give unto each one according to their need. Lord, I pray, God, that you'd impart faith. If there's any here under our voice that's religious but lost, I pray for that soul. God, I pray for victory. I pray for salvation. We ask it in Jesus' name. And amen. You may be seated. I want to preach to you this morning on the faith of mothers. And I guess one of the sweetest memories that anybody can have would be of their mom. Amen. Of a good mom. And uh, the memories of a godly mother. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter... I think it's in Proverbs chapter 29, or it's chapter 31 and verse 28. It says, Her children shall rise up and call her blessed. Uh, a good mother is something to be cherished. That's the first place I heard about the Lord Jesus Christ was from my mother. Uh, the first prayer I remember uh, being ushered into was that at as a little child when my mother would pray. and uh, It's a good memory. Amen. Some of you have your moms with you now. You ought to give them flowers while you can. Amen. They won't appreciate them when you take them to the grave. Amen. Amen. Uh, the dead know nothing as far as that goes. But you ought to be able to, if you're going to do anything for your mother, you ought to do it while you have the chance. Just like serving our Savior, if you're going to be anything for God, you ought to be it while you have your being. Because uh, the winter months are coming on when you won't be able to do what you would like to do. Things will happen. Uh, the Bible says that you ought to serve the Lord with gladness. Amen? And uh, if you want to be the servant that God would have you to be, then you have to surrender. Amen? And surrendering has no part of your will in it. I mean, it ain't surrender to God plus my will. It's either surrender to the will of God. Lord, Thy will be done, not mine, but Thine. If you remember when Jesus prayed on Calvary, He said, Lord, not my will. He said, if it's possible, let this cup pass from before me. He said, but nevertheless, not my will, but Thine be done. And when we surrender to God, we surrender to His will. Come what may. I know that God can set a path for you. and He set a path for me that's straighter, that's better than any path that we could make for ourselves. Amen. Man look on the outward appearance, but God looketh upon the heart. And that's the main thing. I think about a good mother. She, in many ways, she's like the Lord Jesus Christ. She cares about the well-being of her children above that of her own being. Amen. And that's the way the Lord was when they came to Calvary to be able, or to the to the garden there to take the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, I am he. And they fell backwards. And he told them to let the others go. And he surrendered to, uh, to them. But really he surrendered to the Father. Amen. That's who he surrendered to was the will of God. Let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. And uh, so in our text today, I want to get back to our text. Hannah uh, was a woman that was barren. 
Uh, she had no children, and it may seem like a strange subject or a person to use as, as my topic on the faith of mothers, but she had a mother's heart before she ever became a mother. She had a mother's heart before she ever had a child. And uh, there's many that are mothers that don't have a mother's heart. Amen. I've talked to some in the last uh, few weeks leading up to Mother's Day, and uh, they've had uh, shared with me some uh, terrible, terrible uh, memories that they had of their childhood. But I'll tell you what, a mother is a special person. Amen. A mother is a special person that takes, and uh, she's equipped w with this speciality with the Lord. I don't think anybody can love you next to God any more than what a mother will love you. Amen. She'll take the wrong. She'll step in every time and do her best to be able to speak well. Well, Hannah was a woman that had been barren, and uh, they, her husband and her had gone to Shiloh to, there to worship God, and Hannah had uh, been told taunted by uh, his previous wife or his other wife, she had uh, taunted her because uh, Peniel had uh, children and Hannah was barren. And to be barren uh, in, for a woman in the Eastern culture was to have the curse of God on them. And uh, she was made fun of and pressured in many ways. And uh, she had poured her heart out to God. She had went to the Lord in prayer, and she had neither eaten, she hadn't drank anything. And the text, our text tells us, if you'd like to start reading with me in verse number 11, that Hannah had went, and she'd went to the temple there at Shiloh, and she had vowed a vow and said, Lord, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look upon the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man-child. Then will I give un him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it come to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. And Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit, and I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. And Eli answered and said, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou have asked of him. And she said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went away and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. We see here that Hannah had a faith in God. She had been barren for many years. This wasn't her first trip to the altar. No doubt some of you have had issues that you've taken to the Lord and uh, you've brought your children to the Lord. You've brought your husbands to the Lord. You've brought uh, uh, your mates to the Lord and you'd been bringing them there time and time again and praying for their salvation and praying that God would draw them into Himself. And it seemed like your prayers are not being answered. I know many times that I've prayed for folks and if I prayed for them it seemed like they got twice as bad as they was before I'd started praying for them. It seemed like they got more bent for hell. They got more determined to reject the Lord. But I just kept praying knowing that God was able to call the things that are not as though they were. And the Lord made a promise that if you would serve Him and that you'd follow Him, He'd save those of your household. And uh, So Hannah, she had, had her petition that she had brought to God and she knew the place to take it. Amen. She didn't take it under man. She didn't take it in her own hands as others have throughout history. But she went into the Lord and she asked the petition of God that He would grant unto her to open up the flower of her room and to be able to give her a man-child from Him. Amen. And uh, she had begun, she 
was a woman of faith. And in verse 18, uh, she said this after that uh, Eli the priest had answered, said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition. And she believed the report of the man of God. And uh, the woman went her way, and she did eat. And her countenance was changed, and no more sad. You know, when you put your uh, confidence in the Lord, and you put your hope and trust in God, uh, you're going to walk as the thing is already done. Amen? Listen, the Lord Jesus Christ promised that uh, friend that He's coming back. He said this, If I go away, I will come again. I don't know how many people that have been waiting and looking for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It uh, seemed like on the way of they was waiting and during time they began to become weary in well-doing and many had laid down the cross and many had given up on their hope and many had uh, turned back. Amen. I think about Demas. The Bible said Paul had said of Demas that he had loved this present world and he had went back into it. How many have we known through the years that had went back? And uh, Some people said, well, the church is going down. I got news for you. The church is going up. My, my Bible tells me that in the last days, perilous times will come. He said that men shall be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And uh, He said homes would be broken up and those that would be uh, in a, a mother would be against daughter and daughter against mother. And he said that there would be a division. Amen. But friend, listen. Jesus is still coming again. And your hope and faith in God is not in vain. I know this, I've still got an inheritance that's incorruptible, undefiled, and fadeth not away. People, I see so many churches today, many of them stopped having services on Sunday night. Many of them stopped having services on Wednesday night. Many have gone back into the Lord. If you do a survey and talk to people on your job, just on your jobs, ask them how many knows the Lord, and you'll get to probably about 85, 90% in America that people say, oh yes, I was saved, preacher. I've got hope for heaven. I know that I'm born again. I know I'm going to heaven. And they might might be born again. But they might just have a good dose of Baptist religion or Methodist religion. And, uh, but ask them how many's going to church. Ask them where they go to church. Ask them the pastor's name. Ask them what the preacher preached about the Sunday. Uh, the sun, uh, today. Amen. Amen. Even it being Mother's Day, and I guarantee you some of them won't even know the answer. Amen. They say that, they say, the Lord said this. He said it, that there would be a people that would deny the power of God. They'd have a form of godliness, but deny the power. Man, we're living there right now. Amen. Amen. People don't witness because they say it don't do any good. Well, God says it does. As a matter of fact, He empowered the church to be witnesses. The first person to witness to me about my Lord and Savior was my mother. Amen. What a thing that she would uh, lift up her son to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that she would tell you about a Savior. And now, my mom wasn't uh, a strong Christian, but she knew who the Savior was. Amen. Amen. Uh, my family wasn't a church-going family, but when it come down to where the rubber met the road, they would tell you where the real help comes from. My help don't come from man. My help don't come from the government. My help don't come from my own ability. My help comes from, I lift up my eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. And Hannah, a woman of a sorrowful spirit, knew where to take her sorrow. She knew a place to be able to take her petition. You see, her husband, he wasn't so much concerned concern with her being barren. He said, haven't I been as good to thee as ten sons? You can read this in 1 Samuel for yourself. And, uh, and he said, haven't I always been good to you? And hadn't I always uh, give you a healthy portion of an inheritance more than these others? But friend, listen, he didn't care. She was able to go to the Lord. 
she was able to go to the one that cares about every little thing. You see, God knows the things that you go through with. Amen. Sometimes your husband may not know. Sometimes your wife may not know. Sometimes your mom and dad may not know. But there's not a thing that you go through that God doesn't know. Amen. Listen, He's a very present help in time of need. You can take it to the Lord in prayer. You don't have to, you don't have to go it alone. Jesus said this. He said, I'll never leave thee. I'll never forsake thee. He said, I'll be with thee always, even until the end. Hebrews 13 and 5, He tells us that, that the Lord will never forsake thee. So we don't have to be afraid of what men shall do unto us. You see here, Hannah was of a broken spirit and a broken heart and she was grievous and she had went and she had poured her soul out to God. The Bible tells us in Nehemiah 8 and 10 that the joy of the Lord is your strength. The moment that Hannah believed the report that God was going to answer her prayer, a joyful spirit come upon her. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. She rose up. You know what she did? She started acting like God had already answered the prayer. She started walking in the answer that she knew was on the way. You know the moment that you believe that you can come boldly to the throne of grace and find grace to help in time of need, you're going to start to pray? Do you know the moment you begin to believe in prayer and believe that God will meet you there, you can come boldly to the throne of grace, you're going to go there? Do you know the first moment that you believe that God will honor your prayer and, and will give audience to your prayer, you're going to pray? Sometimes it's good for us to fall and, and to come to the end of ourselves. It's good to us to have no place else to go but to God because, friend, that's when your true faith is going to be put to the test. It's hard to test one's faith that God will take care of them financially if you're financially secure. It's hard to be able to find out if you'll trust God in adversement of health if you've got great health. I've heard people say, I'd lay down my life for the Lord. As a matter of fact, I think Peter said that. He said, though these may forsake you, I'll never forsake you. Jesus had just told them, smite the shepherd and the, and the sheep shall, shall, the flock shall stray. Amen. He said, these might do it, Lord, but old Pete will never leave you. Old Pete will be there. And I believe he meant that with all of his heart. I believe he meant that. I don't think he was just, just trying to be... Uh, but I believe he said that out of all sincerity of his soul. Because that's what he really thought about himself. But the truth is, friend, until you're tested, you don't know what you'll do. Amen. I've seen people I thought would stand the battle, and I've seen them uh, coward tail and run. I've seen people I thought would run the whole race that's just dropped out by the sidelines and the, the waysides. I've seen people that I thought would never fall, and yet they have fallen a man fallen bad. You say, preacher, it never happened to me. You don't know what will happen to you. You take your eyes off the Lord and the devil will have you all hemmed up in no time flat. Amen. Listen, she had trusted in the Lord and she expected God to answer her prayer. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, he said, without faith it's impossible to please Him. You can't please God in the power of the flesh. You can't please God in the power. Well, I showed up for service. We had song service here today, but I don't know how many actually sung. And I don't say that because I couldn't hear a, a, a great noise. I don't say that. You say, well, preacher, this, the music wasn't real good. Well, we did the best we could with what we had. Amen. Amen. But uh, it ain't about the music. And it's not about what key you sing it in. It's a matter who you're singing to and with what spirit that you're singing to Him. Amen. And we've come together in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. We've been here many times before. You've had many, many Mother's Day services before. We've had many sunrise services before. We've had many Wednesday night and Sunday night worships before. But have we come to worship Him? Have we come to hear His Word? Have we come to be instructed out of the Word of God and to worship Worship the God of the Word. Many times we gather and we do it habitually and we do it week after week. But I wonder how much is actually given unto praise. I think about a complaint that God sent Israel. He said, To what purpose are your sacrifices unto me? To what 
To what purpose is your is your obligations that you've made and your oblations and your and your sacrifices and your incense that's been are you really giving it unto me? Are you really giving it to me? Or he said, you offer the blind and the halt and the lame. He said, offer it unto your governors and see if they will be pleased. Amen. The Bible said they that worship the Lord ought to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And I'm afraid from the pulpit to the back that many times we fail to do that. Amen. Amen. And I'm saying me, I fail at times. I'm saying that we fail to worship God with our soul. Amen. We come in, we make a part of will worship. And we show up in the flesh, but our hearts are far from Him. Jesus said in the last day, He said that, that people would gather in His name. He said, and in vain they would worship Him, but their hearts are far from Him. I wonder if we're part of the status quo, quote, or if we're going to be those that worship God in spirit and in truth. And the Bible said in John 4 and 24 that God is spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Some would tell you you're not worshiping God unless you're dressed a certain way or unless you, unless you go through a certain motion. But friend, worship is of the heart. Amen. Worship is of the soul. Amen. You know what the best service you can give God? is what you do when you walk out these doors. Amen. Amen. God has seen fit to equip churches throughout the world with people that will preach to them the ways of salvation. And has, we have been equipped until we're running out the ears with the plan of salvation. And with the, with the, the, the road map and the evangel evangelism. And yet, the word stopped going out. The attitude is for many that we've got steeples high enough and, and the radios and the TVs and the internets are, are bombarded with it. Let, it. let them hear them. Well, that's not how God set it up. And thank God for broadcast. Thank God for radio broadcast and television and internet and every other way you can get the gospel out. I'm all for that. But none of that takes the place on one-on-one. -on -one. Amen. Amen. Jesus told the believers, ye are the light of the world. Those that's been redeemed. Amen. Those that's been remade new. Those that's been born from the dead. He said, He had equipped us and gave us power. He's told the disciples to tarry at Jerusalem until you receive power from on high. And God said He gave us power to be witnesses unto Him. Witnesses of what? Witnesses to the salvation of the soul. Witnesses that Jesus Christ is coming back again. Witnesses that God can take the vilest soul and wash them with the blood of the Lamb and make them white as snow. Witnesses that there's hope for the hopeless. Witnesses that there is a way that seems right to a man, but the real way is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 14, 6, He said, I am the way. The truth and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. How long has it been since you told somebody that? How long has it been since you told somebody that Jesus Christ had forgiven you of all your sins and that He had changed your heart? Or how long has it been that you've told somebody, I had to go before God and ask Him to forgive me of my sins? Better than that, how long has it been since you went before God and asked Him to forgive you of your sins? Do you have an altar? You see, Hannah, this woman here had an altar. She had an altar that, that she could go to and she believed the report that God had given. Amen. And she began to walk in that. And you know what? The Lord answered her prayer. You know, He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Amen. The Lord will reward you if you'll but put your hope and trust in God. I seen a thing on the Facebook here one, one day last week. He said, if you've quit church and quit worship because somebody in the church had to hurt you in some manner, then your hope wasn't in God, it was in that person. Amen. You wasn't serving the Lord, you were serving man. Because God hadn't done anything harmful to me. 
As a matter of fact, He's been better to me than I could be to myself. The Lord is gracious and He's, he's, he's plenteous in mercy. And He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that that we asked or think. I thank God for godly mothers, and especially Christian mothers like Timothy come up with. The Bible tells us in the, in the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy if you would, turn there with me. In 2 Timothy chapter number 1 and verse number 5, he said this, Paul writing to Timothy, he said, When I call to remember, it's the unfeigned faith, the unfake faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother. Oh, we've got grandmothers and mothers that have faith. Today, some of you are here, you have your mothers, you have your grandmothers. Some, some in some churches will have their great-great-grandmothers. But you see the faith that's been passed down. Passed down. You say, how was it passed down? It was passed down from word of mouth. It was passed down through through prayer, it was passed down through lifting up Jesus Christ, high and exalted, that He may draw their children unto Himself. Amen. Listen to what Paul said to Timothy. He said, uh, he said that, uh, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance, that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee. Amen. We need to stir up the gift of God. Amen. We, he said here, to Timothy in verse number 5, he said, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee. I don't think that we need a new message. Amen. The one that's given to us at Calvary still works. Amen. There's still wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There's still power, power, wonder-working power. People say, well, you need a new song and you need a, a new message. No, the same old one works. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ still getting the job done. Yeah, man, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What will help my children? Prayer. Take them to the Lord in prayer. What will deliver my children? Take them before God in prayer. Get before God and pour out your heart to them. You say, well, preacher, I've done that. Hannah had done that. Amen. Done it time and time again. But this time when she went, she prayed through. This time she was of a broken heart. This time God honored her prayer. There's been times that I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed and for whatever reason, I don't know if it was my small faith. I don't know if it was because maybe I, I didn't pray in strong enough faith. I don't know what it was, but I've had petitions that I brought to God. I brought my dad to the Lord and prayed for his soul. I can't tell you how many times. Years. And I had the church pray with me. And we brought him to the altar. And I had a broken heart for my dad. Because I knew that if he continued on in the path that he was on, he would end up in hell. And I love my dad. You say, well, your dad was a sinner. Yes, he was. But I loved him. Amen. Amen. He was my daddy. Amen. And I didn't give up. I kept praying. And I kept praying. You see, my family didn't give up on me. The, the women in the neighborhood I growed up, I found out later, had a prayer chain going for me and some of the boys in my neighborhood. And they would pray for us every week when they would meet for Bible study and prayer. And you don't hear much about that anymore. Amen. But ladies in the community there together had a prayer chain and had a, a Bible study together. And they prayed for some of the boys and girls that was in our neighborhood. And they carried a burden for them. And they brought them to their churches. And they asked their churches to pray for them. They may not have been able to go to the mission field. They may not have been able to go out and evangelize in the capacity that I've been able to. But I tell you what, everything that God's ever accomplished in my life, they had a part of it. Amen. Amen. We are laborers together. Amen. That's why you ought to pray for the young, not give up on them. It's so easy to give up today. Amen. It's so easy to give up on our children. It's so easy to give up on our brothers and sisters. It's so easy to say, well, they're not going to make it. Ah, you don't know my God. Amen. Amen. 
You don't know. He's able. Amen. He'll honor His Word. and He'll honor the servant that honors His Word. Don't quit believing. Don't quit believing. Listen, this, this dear lady, she, she believed. Turn, with, uh, turn back to the text with me just for a moment if you would. We see here that in verse number 19 of chapter 1 of 1 Samuel, the Bible said, And they rose up in the morning early and worshipped. This is after that she began to not be sad. This was after that she began to walk in, in the answer that God had given and she had hope in it and she walked in it. And they rose up early and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house in Ramoth. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. He said, Wherefore it come to pass when the time was about after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel. Amen. Saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. And the, and the man, Achana, and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice in his vow. And, Han, and Han, uh, Hannah went not up. For she said to her husband, I will not go up until the child be winged and then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord and there abide forever. And her husband said unto her, Do what seemeth good, tarry until thou hast winged him. Only let only the Lord establish his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until he was winged. And when she had winged him, she took him up with her and with three bullocks and an ephah of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him into the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. And they slew the bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here, praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him unto the Lord as long as he liveth. He shall be lent to the Lord, and he worshiped, and he worshiped the Lord there. Amen. Amen. She made good on her promise. Remember coming to the Lord? Saying, oh God, if you just forgive me of my sins, I'll live for you. Oh God, if you just do this for me, I'll serve you. Oh God, if you just make a way, Lord, I'll be faithful. And so many times we've fallen short of that. You see, I, my thought for this message is the faith of a, of a good mother. The faith of a godly mother. And mothers should have a faith that's worth sharing. They ought to have a faith that they can share something that's real in their life. Something that's working for them. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 22, I think 6, it's train up a child in the way he shall go. When he's old, he should not depart from it. Listen, I know people that's been raised in the house of God and, and they've gotten saved and then got backslid, but God always calls them back into Himself. Amen? Listen, if what you received is real, it won't stay gone long. You can't stay out in the lowly bar too awful long before you get tired in a dry and barren land. You can't stay away from God too long without coming to yourself. Amen. I think about the prodigal son. How that he had gotten out and he decided, and a lot of us have been prodigal on God and we thought we can do it better our way and we'll go our way and mom and dad don't know and I'm going to do it my way only to get out and just fall flat on our face and see the way that seemeth right unto a man in the ways of death. I, I think, I call to memory what the young man said. The Bible said him when he came to himself. Yeah. Who was he before that? Under what spirit was he under the influence of? When he came to himself. He said, how many hired servants have my father? And I perish with hunger. Amen. A lot of us need to come to ourselves and realize life is short and death is sure. Sin's the cause, but Christ's the cure. There's only one life and it soon will pass. Only what's done for Christ will last. Amen. I guarantee you, when you come down time to the end of your days, you're not going to say, I wish I'd made more money. You won't say, I wish I'd got more stuff. I wish I took more vacations. No. 
you're going to say, I wish I spent more time with my family. I wished I invested more in my children. I wished I'd serve my Savior better. Amen. I thank God for, for, for godly mothers that will train up a child in the ways of righteousness. I remember my oldest sister when I was, I guess, about seven or eight years old, nine years old. She had an old Buick, I think it was a Buick station wagon, or might have been a Plymouth. That thing was a, it was a, a jalopy, man. And she'd come through our neighborhood and they'd be 15 kids. You couldn't do that now because it'd be politically incorrect. But they'd be 15 kids piled up in the back of that plus her seven. <laughs> and she'd, we'd get in that car and she'd say, Now kids, you pray that we have enough gas to get to church. And we'd, they'd start praying. Train up a child in the way he should go. She wasn't kidding. The thing was on me. We'd get the church. We'd come out, and I think surely she'd ask somebody for some money, and we'd get in that old car, and she'd say, Kids, pray that we have enough gas to get home. And the kids would start praying. And I wasn't much on prayer. I said, Do you mean that's accurate? And she said, Yeah, we don't have the money, but I don't want to miss church. And I said, that's crazy. We're going to have to walk. But you know, we never walked. I'm serious. I don't, you say, well, that's a coincidence. You call it what you will. I went to church for a long time with them like that. And you say, well, why didn't God meet their need? God did meet the need. Amen. They didn't walk. They had transportation. God made a way. I just thank the Lord that little things that I have seen all through my youth and all through my experience with serving the Lord, I've seen God come through time and time and time again. I've seen people put their hope and trust in God. Yeah. You'd be surprised how many have no hope and trust. They say, that's foolish trying to go somewhere when you're on empty. Probably would be, but when it's worth more to you to go there than it is to stay at home, you'll make an effort. That's the difference between that generation and this generation. Right. It takes very little to keep them out. That's right. It takes very little to keep them down. Yeah. It takes very little to discourage from service. Right. Hey Amen. I think about a mother who takes seven kids, pile them up, dress them as best she could, make sure they're clean. Hey Amen. Take them to that. Not just hers but anybody else's that wanted to go. Amen. There's another lady that lived two doors down from me, Miss Unks. I don't even know her first name. I just always called her Miss Unks. Amen. Her last name was Unks. And this woman would take us to, to the uh, Salvation Army Church. She'd, take the whole, she'd get the whole neighborhood kids and take them. Why? Because she wanted to get us to Christ. Amen. Amen. She had a mother's heart. She had a mother. She didn't raise her children. Amen. And now she was trying to help raise the neighborhood kids. Why? Because we were turned loose. Jerked up by the hair of the head. It was a rougher time. It's a different time than the way kids are raised now. Amen. But I tell you one thing. We had some examples that was real. We had some people that loved the Lord. Listen to what Jesus said in John chapter number 6. In John chapter number 6, in verse number 37, He said, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Do you know that God said that if you would come to Him, if you would come to the Lord, He said, "If All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and he that cometh unto me I will in no wise cast out. He said in verse forty. For he said, no man can come unto me except the Father which sent me draw him. That's why we lift Jesus Christ high and exalted. John 12, 32, Jesus said, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw some man unto myself. No, he said, all men. He don't call any. The one you might call, he'll draw. The one you might not love, he loves. The one you may try to sidestep, he won't sidestep. For God so loved the world. You can put your name there. Amen. Amen. I didn't think God loved me. 
as a, as a little boy, I really didn't. Our family was uh, not as well off as some of them in the neighborhood. and We were kind of the black family on the, on the block. Amen. And, uh, but I tell you one thing, I had a mama that loved me. Amen. Had a mama that loved me. When I would go to church, I found this, that there was people there that loved me. That's why when you have visitors come here, you ought to show them the love of God. Amen. When you have someone come to the house of God, you ought to let them know that they're special. They're somebody that Jesus died for. We need mothers that will pray. Jesus said in Matthew 7 and 7, He said, Ask and it shall be given. He said, Seek and you shall find. He said, Knock and the door shall be open. For everyone that asked us receiveth. We need, we need men and women that will believe that God will like this woman did and start walking in the answer. We need those that will start. Because if you know that Jesus saves, you're going to be publishing Him. I wonder how many on your, our jobs don't know that we're a Christian. I wonder how many in our neighborhood that don't know that we're bought with a price, and that we're not our own. I wonder if there's any knows whose side we're on. Amen. And I'll give it to you, you can't win everybody. But there is no hell number two. Amen. I don't want to offend them. Let me ask you something. <laughs> If you was on your way to hell and somebody rescued you at the last second, would that offend you? Because that's the scenario. Those that have not the Son are on their way to a devil's hell. Hell was not prepared for, for mankind. It was prepared for the devil and his angels. And men, women, boys, and girls go there because they go over the, the will of God. They go over the light of the church. They go over the prayer of the saints. But yet Jesus said, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house shall be full. The Bible tells us in Luke 18 about a, a widow woman who went to a judge that didn't even fear God and said, avenge me my adversaries, avenge me my adversaries, and avenge me. He just kept coming continually. And he said, you see how this widow woman just kept coming and, and until she got her adversaries avenged? He said, shall not God do the same for us. What he's saying, knock and keep on knocking. Ask and keep on asking until you get an answer. Yes, until God says no to you, keep on asking. Now no was an answer. Amen. Amen. When God says no, it's no. But until he says something, you keep asking. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads for a moment. Listen. Listen.